Welcome to Hot Springs Village Inside Out, a weekly podcast where Hot Springs Village, Arkansas is the star. Join me, Randy Cantrell, and my co-host Dennis Simpson as we discuss the history, facts, people, places, events, lots more surrounding Hot Springs Village, Arkansas. Visit the website at hotspringsvillageinsideout.com. Another episode, a brand new episode. Well, every episode's new. Hot Springs Village Inside Out. The website is hotspringsvillageinsideout.com. He is Dennis R. Simpson. I'm Randy Cantrell, and I'll let you make the introductions to our very special guest today. It is, you know, we say a lot of times, we say it is a very special guest, but this is true. Because they for, all are. For, for radio geeks like you and me who have, I mean, I remember growing up listening to WOAI San Antonio as a kid on AM radio, and I always thought how cool it would be to be that. We have somebody today that does it every day, all day long. And that's Mr. Michael Nicolosi. Great to have you, Michael. Hi, UBI. <laughs> <laughs> See the things that come out of his mouth. You never know. You never know. Yeah. Well, let's, let's address the first fact Nicolosi and you're married to lovely Miss Clara Nicolosi at Remax, right? Amen. A- 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 amen. And, and, <laughs> and, and she pu- she pulled you out of the ditch. How long ago? Ooh, uh, 1983. We hitched. Yeah. We already established 38 years. We did the math before we hit record. Yeah. So Cause we're we have to do it live. Well, we know better as my lovely wife, Diane, the CPA says, I am a CPA, not a walking calculator. So there's that Michael, obviously you came with Clara, but how did you get to the village? How did you start voiceovers? What have you done? Tell, you were born a small child, right? Let's hear it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, actually I came to the village kicking and screaming, um, very truly. And my wife said, no, this is where we're going to be. And it took me about five minutes to fall in love with this place. And that was pretty much that. And, um, and I'd be kicking and screaming if they ever tried to move, to take me out of here. Um, this place just absolutely blew my mind. And um, I, Clara had retired from the military and this is where we landed. And I uh, finished up college and came here and I was a computer systems engineer, network engineer, and all that other stuff. And um, <laughs> a perfectly good waste of real talent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, was, I worked for Dr. Wang and, and all that, you know, Wang Global and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, uh, and um, we got here and, and uh, we just kind of looked at each other <laughs> and giggled because we're like, okay, now what? <laughs> so um, I, 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 uh, I, I said, you know, it's, it's pretty much time for me to teach. And so I hit the classroom and taught for a while. And literally, um, while I was in class one day, God said, it's time for you to move on to the next chapter. And, uh, and I said, okay, what would that be? <laughs> and he said, he said there's, a, there's a in, book. There's a book. No, really? <laughs> very seriously. He said, you're going to be a faith-based film actor. And I went, okay. <laughs> so while I was teaching, um, we managed to uh, we managed to do some music videos and some some uh, some animations and things for things for NASA. And so we had some we had some experience, you know, doing that kind of stuff. And I'm going, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm ready for it. And and out of nowhere, this this film comes my way. And while I'm teaching, I end up doing my first faith based film. I was one of the leads, and. Um, I got out of teaching and I said, uh, I said, I think, I think I'm supposed to, to step into voiceover now. Cause I had done some of that, you know, it's how God works. He kind of prepares you doing little things and then there it is. And, um, so I, uh, I, I literally stumbled into it and, um, and I've been doing voiceovers, uh, here for a bit now. And, uh, and I, I still, I'm still an actor and, and now, now I'm a screenwriter and a creator, um, of an animated series. So I, you know, and, and I don't draw, which is really kind of weird, but that's God, you know, it just, <laughs> it just is. <laughs> I, th- I think if we saw the end of the chapter from the beginning, from the first page, we, we wouldn't be able to believe it at times. So we, ca- we have to kind of modularly go there, you know, step by step. Right. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. God's very much a, a, a God of order. 
Um, but when you're in it, you're just kind of looking around going, yeah, okay. <laughs> it, it doesn't, it doesn't seem orderly in the middle of it. Right. Well, it, just, it seems kind of overwhelming at times, but yeah. Yeah. You know, one day you wake up and you find yourself, you know, you're kind of looking around, these cameras are all around and stuff like that. And you're like, what am I doing here? I'm a schmuck from Arkansas. <laughs> So re, re, rewind. So you didn't want to come to the village. Why? Um, I, I wanted to go to Switzerland and, or, uh, or Alaska. And I'm being honest about that. And my wife will tell you, I've been, I've been yanking her chain to go to Switzerland and Alaska or Alaska for, you know, for years, man. And, um, and then she, she brought me here <laughs> which you can imagine I was tied up in the, in the truck. Um, <laughs> but we, uh, you know, we got here and, and, you know, it just, I mean, floored me. I mean, it really did. And I've, I, uh, we've been, I don't know how long, been. my wife will tell you, you know, I don't know the numbers, she, you know, like 17 years, whatever it is. Where'd so you grow been. up? I, I grew up in Houston, Texas. I'm a Texan. Okay. But yeah, this is just, you know, I mean, you know, they say God's country. It's, you know, <laughs> he's smiling here. <laughs> yeah. Well, we certainly agree, which is why we started the podcast. Cause we just wanted to shine a big bright light on it. Okay. Mm. So the, so the acting stuff, theater and that kind of stuff, did you have interest in that kind of stuff as a kid? No, not at all. <clears throat> I, I, I have a bad memory and I mean, like, like legendarily bad. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, no, I, I couldn't, I couldn't get on stage, <clears throat> you know, without a script, which is why I like doing voiceover because it's right there. Um, but I, I can't, I can't, I can't, it's hard, really hard for me to memorize things. I mean, and I'm talking like when I was 16 years old, it was really hard for me to memorize things. Um, going through college, I, I got a degree in biology and we used to have the same, you know, biology, you study all the different animals. And I was in an ichthyology class, which is the science of fish, you know, study of fish. And um, we had a thing called fish baseball. We had these vats of fish, and they would pick one out, give you about two seconds, and then throw it at you. And you'd have to name the sign, you know, hands at your side, you'd have to name the scientific name before you could reach up to grab it. And uh, my son, I'd always take my son in there, and, and he'd crack up because I'd, I'd leave just covered with fish <laughs> stuff, you know, because, I mean, my, my brain just, you know, just never, never, never clicked. I did well, but, you know, that's because – I ate a lot of fish. <laughs> you, know? okay. you caught a lot of fish, if nothing else. Apparently. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> yeah, it is rough, but unbelievable. Yeah. So, so, I, and, and once again, I'm I'm with Randy. I, we're gonna have to back, but way back up. So, <laughs> we, we we started in Houston. Uh, apparently, yeah. uh, I understand the memory thing, but you're not very linear either. I don't know if you've ever heard that before. Or yeah, but but so no. No, no, never heard that. Never heard. That. No, I mean I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. You know, squirrel. Yeah. So, so let me get this straight. So you met Clara. Where did y'all meet? Well, she was from Florida, right? Yeah, that's that's an interesting story. There. Um, she may have actually already told you this story, but very seriously, I was. She I never was, mentioned you at all. We we yeah, we'd rather hear your version anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, I'm the quiet one. Um, no, I very seriously, I, I was in the military and I, and I was, um, <clears throat> I, I was I went back then they called them radio men. It was a communications guy. Yeah. And I would listen to, uh, listen to emergency traffic, you know, if a boat's going down, yes, you know, mayday, mayday. And, they, and I'd be the guy that answered and say, Hey man, you guys might want to take a boat out and go <laughs> and get these people that are sinking in the water. And, um, and you know, in the coast guard and one day I'm totally serious, man, it's got my witness. I heard this voice come over the radio and she called in her boat number and said, you know, we're back from whatever they were doing, fit fueling or whatever. And I, and I, my heart skipped, man. I was like, good grief. Who is that? And I, I, I said, you know, when I asked the guys and of course they told me horrible things and, uh, <laughs> and I didn't believe them. So I picked up the phone and called and I said, I said, Hey man, who, who are you? <laughs> and she said, I'm, you know, petty officer Nicolosi, such and such. And I went, and that was it. <laughs> you know? And we, I'm totally serious. We, we wrote little cards and letters to each other for, I don't know, like a month or so and wait for me to get qualified so I could leave the base. And cause that's 12 on 12 off, you know? And, um, 
<clears throat> and uh, eventually I, I, I got qualified. I left the base and, and I knocked on her door and she answered and, and um, she said, she said, hi, I'm, I'm Claire. And I said, and I said, hi, I'm, I'm Michael and I'm not here for a serious relationship. That's how I started. <laughs> and and uh, cause I was so scared. I'd never been in love and I was so scared, but that's, that's literally how we met on the radio. I heard her voice and it just, it just took me. World's greatest pickup line. I'm not here for a serious relationship. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the truth. I was petrified, man. I'd never been in love, you know? And it just, I mean, just, man, I was gone. Who knew you were awesome. such a smooth guy? I mean, that talk about a smooth operator. I mean, oh, that's yeah, a line. Yeah. That's oh, a yeah, line. I'll write a book, man. Had, had, oh, you, yeah. had you worked on that line for several days? I mean, <laughs> hey, when I see this girl for the first time, you know. No, no, actually, actually, I thought I'd be a heck of a lot more slick than that. But <laughs> <laughs> no, that's that's what came out, though. I just I was so I, mean, I was like shaking, you know. Uh, it, yeah, because remember, he can't he can't remember lines. Uh, yeah. so. <laughs> no cards. <laughs> Couldn't have practiced it long. So it's it's good to meet you, Clara Nicolosi. Yeah, I mean, Clara, exactly. no yeah, I'm sorry, no, misspelling. No, <laughs> Clarice. No. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> can I can I pencil your name on your forehead so when yeah, I really look at you, I can remember it? Staple it to the cat, man. Something. <laughs> All right, you're a drummer. We got to bring up we got to bring up the musicianship. So tell us about how that got started. You know that okay that that does go back. Um, I've been playing drums for I don't know, over fifty years now, um, which is tough because I'm only twenty seven. But yeah. but I, uh, I I I literally I don't know what it was. My you know my 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 family will tell me you know I mean I was a little dude you know you know banging on everything, but they finally got me a drum kit and um, and I just you know that was it, man. You know, kind of like getting married. You know. You know it just changes your life. And, uh, and so I was that heathen drummer for, you know, as many years as I could get away with. And then the Lord took me and said, you know, stop it. And, uh, and, and I became God's drummer. <laughs> so, so what is, so, so what is it, what is it today? Like, what does your drumming habit look like today? I, I have kits, um, multiple kits, and I keep I keep one set up. We're, we're actually just about to expand the studio, so I can have a couple of kits set up. And uh, the stuff I play on, I'm I'm actually doing. I'm actually playing. I'm so stoked. Um, I hired a composer for my series, right? My animated series, and I didn't bother to to say things like, you know, I, I'm gonna play. <laughs> so he reached out to me and said, Hey man, do you play drums? And I, and so I sent him a video. He's like, Oh, cool. You can do this. And so I get to play drums on my soundtrack. So I'm like, yes. <laughs> All right. Well now, re now unwind. So th this series, tell us, tell us about this. This is that old nonlinear thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, we're used to this. Yeah, I'm used to this because I have a co-host that operates yeah. pretty much the same way you do. He's worked with um, me before. A seven one nine thirty eight fifty two. Yeah, I like, it, but again. I like, but I like it. So tell us about this series. Uh, yeah, Lord, the Lord put it on my heart. Um, almost, almost two years ago, about two years ago. Um, the animation is just not where it's supposed to be. I, I love anime. I've got, if you were to see, I've got animation on my walls and paintings, things like that. I, I love the art of animation. I love this, you know, the talents and the, the voiceover. I love all of that. You know, it's, it's beautiful. You can tell a story and just like, you know, it's visceral and, um, but I don't draw. <laughs> so Lord said, you're going <clears> to, <throat> you're going to create an animation. I went, okay. So I did. And um, I, I wrote some scripts. I brought in a co-writer who I'm very close with. Uh, we share the same last name and, um, and uh, we wrote 10 episodes. Um, I created this series. We wrote 10 episodes. And, um, and I said, well, let's just see where, you know, where they go. You know, are they good? Are they not good? And I sent them out to um, some, some Christian film festivals and some non-Christian film festivals, you know, in, in script writing and screenplays and things like that. And they kept winning. And, uh, like, um, we got, I don't know, 30, 30 something, 40 something awards. And, um, <clears throat> and I, I just kind of laughed 
So, okay, here we go. And uh, um, the Lord put it strong on my heart. So I said, I said, all right, let's, uh, let's see what we can do with this. And I said, I'm looking for an animator. Boom, an animator comes up. I'm looking for a composer. Boom, a composer comes up. And these are guys, these are legends that are, they, and they, 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 they came to me, which is what's really weird. Um, I, I'm on, I'm on a, a Facebook, which, you know, I, I have like 100 friends and they're all industry people. I don't, I don't friend people on Facebook. I think it's kind of silly to, nobody cares what you eat for dinner. So, um, you know, there are people who talk about scripts and things like that. And um, and this guy comes, I mean, literally private messages me and says, hey, man, uh, you know, you're doing this animation. I'm watching what's going on. I'm listening to, to, you know, to your heart. I want to be a part of it. I want to be your composer. And I looked him up and I went, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, the guy's like, you know, I mean, I, I just, I laughed, you know, that's all I could do. It's, it's God sending these, you know, sending these people my way. And the same thing happened with the animator. The animator is Baber Animation. She's done, I mean, she's done Rugrats and she's done, you know, just on, I mean, there's a, a ton of things these people have done. Um, the, the composer's done um, Good Grief Cat Scratch and uh, with, Doug, with Douglas Tenabel. Um, he's done uh, two different Star Trek series he's done you know just i mean a ton of stuff ridiculous and um uh and, and then this this i know where this um <laughs> this animation voiceover artist comes in and says i want to be your director your voice director and that's katie lee katie lee is um i don't know if you know she's uh, good grief she's been a my little pony she's uh she was richie rich she was um Oh, she was on Darkwing Duck and on and on and on and on and on. I mean, she's got a ton of, you know, and she says, I want to be your voice director. And then um, we, we wrote this teaser. It's like a six minute teaser. And all these people started because they want to be a part of it. And, I mean, I didn't, you know, I didn't ask them. They, you know, they started flooding me. And it's like, um, so I got Yuri Lowenthal. Um, it, it plays Josh Miles. He's in it. Uh, Aria Curzon, who's um, she was, uh, she's a Petrie from Land for Time and all that. Melissa Disney, she's in it. Um, uh, just uh, Dina Monica Bullens, Keith Silverstein, Veronica Taylor, and I'm trying to get these in my head. Rich Swingle, uh, Kelly Jean Badgley, um, just on and on. And Michael Orenstein. Just I mean, there's a, there's a if if you know voiceover. I mean, these guys are like, I mean, they're in a, a world set apart. And I just, I, I kept looking at, I kept looking at the Lord going, are you kidding me? You know, I mean, wow. I, I you know, I, I just, I keep, can, can I, I, I keep just, asking, you know. Let me interrupt wow. just for one second, Michael, if I can. Can I tell you what I hear? I hear a guy who is dumbstruck and Randy, you'll, you'll bite into this immediately because you're humble, Mike, you don't think that you're at this stratosphere like these other people. And then when they contact you, you're like, why are you calling me? What are you calling me about? Uh, I think we've heard some of your work, Mike. I understand you, you don't, you don't see yourself as a rock star. And I understand that because you're a, a truly humble guy, but at the same time, I don't really think it's that surprising that these people contact you. I think it's probably it's just fresh to you because you've never had that intro before. And it's just a, it's a new and unique thing. You know what I'm saying? Randy, Randy has a little uh, deal in one of his coaching where he talks about when you can find humility, you can go to these other places. If you think you know it all, then, then there's no need in talking to anybody because you mm. know it all. Right. Well, yeah, you know, and, and clearly Mike's a man on a mission with this. So where are you at in this, in this project now? So what's next? I just got the animatic today. Um, well, the, it's like the fifth version, uh, today, cause we're, we're fine tuning it. Um, right. getting, tightening it up and no, let's pull this, let's, let's pull the blinds down instead of having the door closed, that, that kind of stuff. You yeah, know? yeah. And, um, so I'm working with Baber animation. She just sent the animatic today. Uh, my co-writer and myself are going through it. We're, we're pouring over it, making sure that everything's tight. Um, the gentleman who's doing the sound design is John Bowen. I had worked with him on a, on a voiceover project. Um, I think last year 
And he and I hit it off really well. And, and he said he wanted to work with me again on a, on another project. And so I, you know, of course I went to him and uh, he's already done a little bit of engineering for me. He's the guy that did uh, the second iteration of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Speed Racer and all of the Beavis and Butthead stuff. I mean, he's got a great, great sound design ear, man. And um, <clears throat> he just kind of stepped in and said, yeah, you know, he wanted to work. Um, his schedule is is tough, though, to, you know, to lock in because mm -hmm. you can imagine, you know. Sure. So yeah. but let, that's let me ask real quick. Let, yeah. let, let's, let's take the five mile high view just for a second. An animatic is like a wireframe that you would start with or because not of our, all of our listeners are going to know what that is. Oh, I apologize. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, an animatic is, is basically, <clears throat> basically um, it's when you take the, it's when you take the boards, you know, when, when, cause you know, they'll draw frames representing the motion and it's a, like a, like an outline, a rough outline for what the, what, what it'll look like. Mm -hmm. And then you take the the voiceover tracks that we we recorded with all these artists, and 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 uh, I went through and you know took the best you know okay this is how I want it to lay out, and um, <clears throat> and then the animator takes her boards, um, I don't know however many drawings there are, and she places the sound there so that you actually see the drawing and the sound as it's represented. Really? Um, it's just, it's not animated because it's, you know, it's a static picture, sure. but you, it gives you an idea of a what it's the gonna, field of, of the where flow. The, yeah, yeah, where the you, music's going to be, where the, where the actors are going to speak from that kind of thing. Yes. And, and once we get, uh, once we get that tightened up to where I'm, I'm satisfied and, uh, then we'll send it to, um, actually it'll go two different directions. It'll go to the, uh, to the animator and they'll do a slug. Um, they'll slug it up and send it to the um, the sound designer who will go through and tighten it up, like seriously tighten it up, add sound effects and all the other things that he does. Then they're going to send it to uh, the composer. The composer scores it. And uh, and then we send it to, you know, the, the finishing house and they, you know, do the whole bit. But, yeah, it, and, it'll and be this, probably this, April. And uh, OK, that's what I was going to ask. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, you're, you're still a number of months away. An awful lot of people, an awful lot of work. It's, it's a, for six, seven minutes of animation. It's a, it's a lot of work. I was about to say how many hours for six or seven minutes of animation? Hundreds. I mean, thousands. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's it, well, when you can, when you count everybody, yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's a lot, man. It's serious numbers. And, and how many people roughly, I mean, 20, 30. Well, oh, there's, there's 20 something just in the cast. Really? I didn't, I, yeah, I didn't do, I didn't do what a lot of people do where they, you know, you have one person will do five voices and this person will do six voice. Um, I, God didn't want me to do that. Um, I, it's right now in animation. I don't know if you know it or not, the union and such, there's a, you know, there's a hassle with animation with voiceover and, um, uh, there's a, like a lack of respect. And I, in fact, I had a, an hour, hour and a half long conversation with the union um, cause they wanted this project to go union cause they knew where, you know, they know where it's going and they know the people that are coming on board. And, and so they were kind of pushing and I went, <laughs> no. Um, and so, uh, it, it's my way, it's my way of saying, you know, there's value and, mm. and I, I won't, I won't let, uh, an artist do more than like two voices, um, and, and, and that says something considering I'm working with like Katie Lee and people like that, that do thousands of voices, but I, I don't, I don't believe that it's, I don't believe that it's ethical. And are so, you doing, are you, are you doing voice work on it yourself? Not if I can help it. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 I'll probably end up because everybody's telling me to, um, I did, I did a voice on the, on the teaser, but I, I'm, I'm probably going to pull it uh just because I, I feel uncomfortable i don't even use my real name i use armando del fucci because you know why not of course um, i mean that's such a common name armando del fucci greg that's jones a, david that's Smith. actually my name of my production company it's another armando del fucci production but and there's a story there, <laughs> <laughs> I bet there is. well do tell yeah uh 
Uh, okay. Um, we got you, nothing but time and film. You opened, on, you opened the door, so yeah. I'm walking in. I'm sorry. <laughs> See, this is this is why my wife is usually. <laughs> no, it's all good. It's all um, good. It's just no, this is what happens when three squirrel chasers get together. I, this is what's going on. Here. I'm a brutal, practical joker, and when I say brutal, I don't use the word lightly. So um, I was a I was a school teacher, right? I was at a high school, and um, we had done some some pretty successful videos and this that and the other with NASA and with CMT and this that and the other. You know, with music video being aired and all, you know, it was like woo. And um, but uh, the 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 state of Arkansas. Department of Education, you know, um, I'm a non-union guy, so this will, you'll, you'll know where, where this, this landed. They directed me to make a video to promote, announce and promote Common Core. <laughs> I went, no, thank you. Have a good day. And they said, no, you don't understand. You don't have choice. You have to do this. All right. Now tell us and- what Common Core is. Uh, no, so <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. What no, you have to. Oh, okay, you, you I'm have sorry. To. Common you have Core, to. Common Core is that sword that got that stabbed the United States education system and split it from uh, what we were, you know, how everything was to how everything is. It, it literally cut. It stabbed right into the heart of education. It, it's fractional. It, it's fractional. It, it really yeah. divided. It's very divisive. Uh, yeah. and, and basically, it was a it was a series of metrics that you had to measure an exact metric. And if the child didn't meet this metric, then they obviously weren't learning. Well, everybody learns different ways. I mean, okay. anyway, it's it's a it's a. Uh, am I fair enough there? Am I right? In the yeah, that's right exactly place? right, man. And, mm-hmm. and and they said they said this is how you have to teach it. I mean, they, that's some bizarre. You know, I you know. I'm not a math wizard, but I can freaking do, you know, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth grade math. It's not rocket science. And I can teach it um, and did. But they were saying that you have to do it this way. And I know my students, man, at the time, I, I, you know, I know them. I know what they need. And I wouldn't teach a subject to the class. I taught concepts. And then I would go in and I would teach individual, right, to, to, to you know, small groups. And, okay, this is what you need and, 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 and deal with it so that everybody understood and they were, they were able to grasp the concept. But Common Core ripped that out of your hands and said, no, this is how you have to do it. And they were really screwed up ways, man. Method, the methodology was really messed up. And uh, it's, it's still very, very uh, divisive and still very... Uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a conversational product to say the least, yeah. but, but now you, they were, they said you have to do this because yeah. you were a yeah, state employee or what? And you said no. Yeah, I said no. And then, and I went to talk to my principal cause he's, he's, you know, he and I, are, he, he was my support when, when, you know, the state came in to have me fired, he stood and said, no, I don't think so. Um, I, I was, I was that, I was way outside the box teacher. Right. And uh, <laughs> surprise, and um, and uh, everybody kind of hunted hunted me, and I'm being I'm not exaggerating on that. Um, but my principal stood stood there and and got in the face of the district and and the 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 uh, state and and just said no, you, you don't touch him. He's just don't on. tell me. Let me guess. And and the principal's name was Alfonso. No, yeah, no, no. Armando. Actually, believe it or not, Armando. And I'm not joking. <laughs> Jeff and Leslie. That's that's the principal and his wife. They're the next door neighbors in my animated series. Uh, yeah, and it's it's and and their kid Molly is one of the kids. Yeah, it's sweet. very serious. How but I, I it's a way to honor them. But um, anyway, so I said I said no that, and I went to my principal. And he said he's yeah, you probably need to do this. And I said okay, but it's going to be on my terms. And so anyway, I I did, and so I didn't let anybody see it, and um, I put together. Uh, a satire, <laughs> and I, I did. I, I, I took I took old science films, like old agricultural <laughs> science films, and I created characters <laughs> with the fifties music. Dun 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 dun. Yeah, dun, I did. Dun, 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 dun. I really did. You know, banjos the whole bit, man. And uh, I'm not joking. <laughs> and so I, I did this really bizarre satire 
on Common Core and um, didn't let anybody see it. And so they had this auditorium full of parents and, and you know, the, the muckrakers and, and, you know, the big wigs and all of the faculty and staff. And uh, I said, here, man, just play this. <laughs> Does this have anything and, to do with the practical joker part? Yeah, to- they, they played yeah. it. Now, everybody in the audience was cracking up, <laughs> except them two guys from the state. <laughs> they were pissed. <laughs> they had drank the Kool-Aid. They were inoculated. They, they were no, indoctrinated, I, you know. But, just, Armand, just, but did Armando do this film and not you? Actually, that's that's exactly what it is. At <laughs> yeah. the end of it, it says an Armando Del Fucci production. <laughs> and every time I would do practical jokes like that, and I did a bunch of them, they were Armando Del Fucci productions. So he took the heat, what I'm hearing. Right? Oh, yeah. And oh, where yeah. did the name where did the name come from? Thin air? I, another practical joke. <laughs> <laughs> I went to uh, I went to training as a teacher, and I'm being serious. I think we're in Florida or something like that. And uh, when they asked a name, you know, they go around and ask names. And I said, "I'm Armando Del Fucci," and, and I spoke with an accent, and this and the other. And um, right, you know, and and we went through this. I mean, I, we went through a week of class. And when they were giving out the certificate, she comes, you know, Armando, Armando, and I looked over and went, like, "How did she say?" <laughs> Who is and that? Then, I've never heard that. Looks name. At me and she goes like this. I said, my name's not Armando in, in my, my natural voice. And she says, excuse me. And I said, I'm, I'm Nicolosi. And, and then and my principal and my head of curriculum are sitting next to me either side. And they're going, no, that, that's Nicolosi. <laughs> like that. Playing along. Ooh, she was pissed. <laughs> you know, I, you're, you're touching on, on, a, on a general principle that is worldwide now, I believe. And that is everybody needs to learn how to take a joke. I mean, really? I mean, really? Come on, people. It's a joke. Amen. Amen. You do own Armando Del Fucci.com, don't you? Um, actually, I don't necessarily have to, uh, but it is, it is an LLC. It's, it's, it's my, it's my company. That's (laughs) awesome. Another Armando Del Fucci production. Another Armando Del Fucci. So, so let's walk through it because you're a fascinating guy, Michael, really. And we could do this all day, but let me go through what's the typical day you get up and you say, okay, you know, we can see and not everybody who's watching here, but he has a beautiful booth behind there. The last time I came out of a booth like that, Michael, do you know what they told me? <laughs> yes, sir. Mr. Simpson, you do have hearing loss, but <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. What that no is. kidding. <laughs> Diane, we saw that in the, one of your pictures the other night, and Diane said, that booth looks familiar. I said, yeah, when I was getting my hearing test, they were like, yeah, you're stone deaf in that ear, Mr. Simpson. Uh, but I see you have a little half cone, a little half shield behind you there and a set of headphones. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and that, is that the quick record thing? And then you go over to the booth and do something that's absolutely super silent? Or what? How do you do this? What does the day look like? Um, I, 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 I have a computer in the other room. And I sit and and I'll go through and go through the the days, uh, you know, the ones that the, the jobs that come in overnight and it's voiceover and film and uh, commercials and game uh, video games, things like that. OK, so there's, a, there's a list of them and I'll go through all those and I'll kind of go through and see which ones um, feel right, you know, because I mean, I'm, I'm not going to do you know, a 26 year old, um, Filipino. You but, said you're 27. Is that why? I mean, right, right. It's okay, the Filipino you're off. part. You're <laughs> off. Yeah. I can't, I, I tried, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, they, they can embrace it. They just want to slap it when I do things like that. So, um, but, uh, I go through and find the ones that are right for me. And if it's film, <clears throat> um, I'll spend, you know, uh, a good half a day creating the character if it's voiceover. Um, and I'll usually do about a dozen voiceover auditions a day. And those are maybe 15 and those are pretty quick. I mean, I can knock them out. You know, they take about a half an hour to an hour each and, um, about half an hour each. And then, uh, film takes about a half a day to a day, a full day for one audition because it's a little more involved creating the character because, you know, they see your face and, you know, you can't hold the script and let your voice work it. You've got to be the, you know, you've got to be hundred percent in it. And um, so that's, that's a typical day. And and somewhere in there, um, 
I managed to remember to drink water or eat something and make dinner for the wife when she comes home. Wander to the restroom. I failed at those three things usually multiple times a week. <laughs> <laughs> did you yeah. do? Did you take any acting classes at all? Sort of, but no. Um, I mean, I did the you know when in middle school and high school speech. I even did it in college. Right. You know where you know imp improvisation and and impromptu and. Uh, duet acting and all that kind of stuff. But I was never, you know, that was never me. Um, mm -hmm. I just did it because, um, to be honest, you know, we, we went on trips, man. We went to tournaments and I got to take, yeah. take off and, and it was fun. <laughs> you know, we got hotel rooms, things like that. It was fun, man. Safe to say um, the majority of your, of your VO work is, is character voices. I would say so all much your own character. natural voice. Uh, yeah, I, you don't, you don't, I don't very rarely. And I mean, rarely do I ever use my own voice. I don't, I, you know, my wife gets on to me about that just for the record. Um, she said, she says that I, I should, because I, you know, I could do these, you know, whatever's, but you know, I, I'd rather be a, you know, I'd rather be a, an alien or a, an acorn or a, you know, <laughs> you know, just something really cool, man, that I can create this whole language for. I mean, it's, that's, to me, that's, that's way more interesting and, um, and fun to be honest with you. Yeah. I, I cannot tell you how fascinated I am in my mind. I'm thinking to myself and pardon the term or pardon the phrase, but you know, so creative, so, um, just open palette, you know, and for you to sit behind a desk, teaching kids and little brains, and then be told exactly how to do that as if you're some autoton that is just going to repeat the state line. Yeah, that didn't go well, did it? No, 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 I bet not. No. I bet well, not. if you just weren't such a low energy guy, though, Mike, <laughs> then, you know, that's and so introverted problem. and yeah, so introverted. Know. I mean, really, Yeah. if, if we could just, <laughs> if we could just amp you up just a hair more. <laughs> Do you have any coffee nearby? No, no, actually, <laughs> I haven't had a cup of coffee in a bit. I, I drink tea, but I, no, I, I, actually, I do drink coffee. I just haven't had it in a couple of days. In my mind, I, in my mind, I disembodied Miss Clara and took her voice away, you know, because I was, you were talking about hearing her on the radio. And I thought she has this sweet little Southern draw that's very gentle and very whatever. And, I, you know, I, I can understand why that's appealing to you, but it's nothing like you, Michael, if you know what I mean, right? <laughs> no. Um, no, I, I, you know, uh, we're, we were from two different worlds when we met and we've become very much one being that has a lot of weird voices and a lot of weird thoughts. Um, but luckily, uh, she heads that up and I just become an arm. <laughs> you know? Well, I tell you what, I, I know we need to get to the lightning round here in a minute, but I want to ask some lightning round questions. And Randy, I need you to help me here because I've got some questions. Mike, just, just, I'm going to name somebody, uh, name something. And you tell me what you think while Randy's looking up the other ones here real quick. I've got them ready. Yeah. Ren and Stimpy. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd get you. I thought I'd get you. Oh my gosh. They, they were absolutely ridiculously funny and they were. so far outside the box, you know, just came out of left field. And I love that kind of stuff. Well, a, a dog that looks like a cat, a cat that looks like a dog and they scream at each other. And one of them's kind of a moron. And it's, um, it's, uh, happy, not, happy, joy, joy, happy, happy <laughs> joy, joy. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, the, one of my favorite was the, uh, space odyssey where they're trapped in space together. Oh my gosh. And he says, would you quit that incessant? breathing that in and out <laughs> oh when, when they had plaid they would they would put a, an outfit of plaid on the screen and the plaid would never move but the guy would move that was ridiculously creative really that, that little oh. touch of animation they were so outside the box i love that it, it reminded me of upa if you remember them from the late 50s early 60s oh my gosh just that kind of animation uh just so far out there. Okay. So Brilliant. If, if I say this one, the cat came back. Do you remember that one? The cat came back. The cat. I'll have to send it. You will have to send a link. It's a little bitty. It was done in what's the, the, uh, it was done at Cal art, Cal arts in California. 
Okay. And it's got a little song, you know, and it's basically no matter what this guy does to get rid of the cat, you know, the cat comes back, right? He, he <laughs> rowboats out to the middle of the lake and he takes the bag with the cat and he throws it out and it's a shot underneath the water and there's a dozen other bags under the water. <laughs> 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 and when he get by the awesome. time he gets by the time he gets back, the cat's sitting there waiting on him. You know. <laughs> anyway, I'll have to send it to you. It's classic, uh, Bugs Bunny, that kind of oh. stuff. What, what do you think? Yeah, yeah. That's that's a that's a that's a you know. That's the league of its own gold, with the gold rim. Yeah. You know, yeah. uh, all the WBs, man. They were just they were absolutely incredible. <clears throat> You know, and it's as simple as, and these are things that formulate based on your, your timeline. But uh, somebody said something on Facebook the other day. They said, we'll gladly repay you on Tuesday. And I was like, Quimpy from Popeye Wimpy. Cartoon, you know that? Yeah. Anyway, anyway. Randy, yeah, I digress. And, and sadly, too many of them have been almost been canceled now with the cancel culture that we're facing. Oh, well, that's you know, that's you know I, was, topic. I was chairman of the Hot Springs Documentary Film Festival for a while, and we actually had a a uh, anti PC series of films from Warner brothers. And they had bugs bunny during world war II. They had some extremely anti Japanese video, but mm -hmm. that was, it was from a different time. It was from a different culture. And as oh, you history. looked at that, you thought, well, I can see how that would have in that day. That, mm -hmm. that was what you would have wanted to play. Now you think, wow, how completely out of sync or whatever, you know? So but, but it's history, you know, history is history is not something you can change. It's not something you have to accept. It's just something that happened. Yeah, and, and, and it know? ain't always pretty. It ain't always. Yeah, pretty. it's a signpost. It's a signpost that you read on the way to wherever you're going. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes those signposts cause you to turn. Sometimes they cause you to hit a wall. <laughs> um, sometimes they let you go a little faster. Yeah. But. Yeah. It is what it is, man. It, it, you know, it's not for you to judge what's right or wrong. It just, it just was, man. No, no, no. We, we need to fix history. That's what we need. We need to fix it, you right? You can't fix history. Yeah, it's already happened. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> Randy, Randy, any cartoons you want to ask about? No, but before we get to the lightning round, I do want to ask. So the, I love Hot Springs Village most because. Oh, my stuff is here. Yeah, well, that's an obvious. <laughs> no, no. What, what won you I, over I, in I'm five not, minutes? What won you yeah. over in five minutes? Hot Springs, Hot Springs, and I'm being serious about this. Hot Springs Village is is the only place I've ever lived that feels like a complete entity. You know, it, it it's got it, it's got heart. You know, it's got that it's got that place where no matter where you go, you're going to meet someone that you can connect with. No matter. I mean, you'd be standing in line and frustrated, but you'll meet somebody you can connect with. And and their hearts are just there, man. Yeah. It, it, we I've gone to see shows, you know, at the at the, at the theater. There. The Woodlands. And, hmm? the, yeah, Woodlands. the Woodlands. Yeah, Woodlands Auditorium. And there'll be people sitting behind us or sitting next to us or whatever in front of us. And we'll, inevitably, we'll get into a conversation, and it's such a pleasant conversation. I, I've been to a lot of places where I didn't want to have conversations. <laughs> I've lived because you know military. I mean, you bounce around a lot, and uh, there's a whole lot of places I can tell you I don't want to live. Um, this place is incredible, I mean, and it is the people. Obviously, it's the location, but it's the people. I mean, they're yeah. they're they're absolutely incredible. Everybody's a friend you just haven't met yet in Hot Springs Village. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. All right, here's the lightning round. These are these are quick. Hiking, boating, golf, or tennis? Hiking for me. I, I, I love I love to hike. I love to be outdoors. What's your favorite What's your favorite trail to hike inside uh, actually, the village? I, I, I anywhere. I walk anywhere. I just you know I just I love to walk. Man after my own heart. Hamburger or taco? Neither. I'm a, I'm a vegetarian. Really? Okay. <laughs> we got to know more about that. How long has this been going on? Are you Ooh. lying to us? No, I'm totally serious. I figured this is was our, like a... Is, our, is, is this Armando talking? Or is <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was thinking. I'm like, Armando's yanking your leg here. No, right we, no we've, been, we've been... I guess we've been vegetarians for... 
well, we were pescatarians for a period, but we're full <laughs> vegetarians. Oh, well, that's pescatarian. <laughs> yes, yes, it's a vegetarian vegetarian that sings gospel music. No, <laughs> pescatarian eats fish, but a vegetarian is you know that's that's you know that's that's what we are, and and uh, you know we've been I guess we've been vegetarian for something like 16, 18 years. Really, a long know, time. Years. Something like Who that. Yeah. Well, look at you. Yeah. Well, whoa, 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 kind of stuff you learn when you, you ask. Saw what I ate when we were out, man. Hang on, hang on, hang on. But yes. I see you down at the village hibachi on a regular basis. Do y'all get the noodles? Fish. Fish. Oh. Vegetarian. Elite, Elite fish. Oh, yeah. But okay, most yeah, of the time, uh, most of the time, it's veggie. Really? In fact, almost all the time it's veggie. Oh, yeah. and Diane loves their veggies at Village Hibachi. Sorry, I didn't oh, yeah. mean to digress us there. Okay, right. beaches, beaches or woods. Ooh, oh man! Could I have both? Could I be like in the woods overlooking a beach? How about the village <laughs> on a beach? You know, I'm serious. Yeah, I, I'm a, I'm, I'm a, I'm a both guy because, you know. Yeah, I get it. That's fair. All right. If you had a warning label, what would it say? <laughs> Don't shake. <laughs> Favorite sport? Ah, uh, that's a tough one. Um. I, I, I love football, but I don't watch football because football isn't football anymore. Um, but I love football. Yeah. All right. We'll go with it. Appetizer or dessert? Appetizer. And what would it be? Uh, probably something very large. <laughs> <laughs> High <biggest> quantity. <laughs> <laughs> A plate bigger than your head. Yeah. Full of bring and bring that platter over here. Oh, are you feeding the whole table? No, that's that's just mine. <laughs> that's right. I love right. Salads. And I and I know you got the blinds, the blinds are pulled down, but what's the most interesting thing that you can see out your window? Um at, at times for real, um deer and fox and stuff like that running around playing here. Yeah. Re- reading, watching, or listening? Uh listening, because I'm a musician. Yeah. Sneakers, sandals, or hiking shoes? Oh, man. Sneakers, for sure. All right. Well, I won't even ask this. Do you have a nickname? What is it other than Armando? <laughs> I actually believe it or not, Nick. Really? Nick. Yeah, okay. N-I-C. I get it. Yeah, just NIC. Yeah, Cause well, it, it, goes back to, it goes back to being a teacher. I started teaching fourth grade. The kids couldn't pronounce my name, so it was Mr. Nick. And it yeah. just in, in the military, it was Nicky and Nick and yeah, just people couldn't pronounce Nicolosi. First job. I think it was I think it was flipping burgers at Dairy Queen, I think. That's hard to remember back that far. It's you hard speak, to remember. Do you speak any other languages other than English? An alien doesn't count. <clears throat> um I speak a little Spanish. I had to take it in college to graduate, uh, because I went to like eighteen thousand <laughs> universities. And they all have different requirements. Yeah, yeah. And um, so I ended up taking Spanish. And um, I, I, I know enough to, to you know, because I'm in the military, I went to Central America and stuff like that. So I, I, I made it, to, you know, I mean, I, I could get I could get around and get out of jail, that kind of stuff. You could converse. <laughs> yeah. Favorite movie. Stuff. Favorite mm-hmm. movie. Um, I, I don't know that I have one. And, and I mean that sincerely because I, because I, because I'm in, you know, because I'm in that business. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's you know, your favorite child, right? Yeah, that's yeah, fair. Well, no, that's easy. I've only got one. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't have one. <laughs> no, um, I don't. I don't have a favorite because it'll change. Literally, it'll change tomorrow. You know, I mean. Yeah. I, I saw a brilliant documentary. So I mean, you know what I'm saying? They're they're yeah. always. Yeah. Man. Yeah, it's a moving target. I get it. Yeah. If you were a superhero, what power would you have? Uh the power to the power to overcome evil at will. I like I it. Like yeah. What's the last thing you recorded on TV? I, I, I'm, I'm mis- misunderstanding. Are you mean like what's appearing on TV? The last thing I was in. No, the last thing. Saying- the last thing you DVR'd. The last thing you recorded on TV. <laughs> Sorry. Not you, not you on TV, but yeah. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Um, uh, okay. Uh, did you watch that? Did you watch that Netflix documentary I told you to watch about drummers? Count me yes. down. 
Count me down. Have you watched that yet? You no, haven't, I haven't watched that yet. No, I haven't. Yeah, you got to uh, watch like, that. Get back is coming. It, it, the, the the trailer just dropped, so I'll be I'll be recording that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There you go. All right. What would you sing at karaoke night? Badly. Yeah, you and me <laughs> both. All right. Here, um, these are in your will. Go ahead and answer that one. Uh, I really, really badly. I, I no matter what the song is, I just. I'm a drummer, man. There's yeah, a real okay. stare at the backs well, then, of those. Then guys you'll appreciate these last two. Your favorite music musician or band? Ooh, I, that would have to be Joe Morello. Joe okay. Morello played played drums for the Dave Brubeck Quartet in the uh -huh. uh, late '50s through the '60s. He was you know, incredible. I tell you what, I, I have listened to Take Five oh, more yeah. times, and and I still. It, it's just a foreign language to me and I love music and I've been in music a long time, but it, take five was just a, anyway, it was a water, a watershed moment. That guy's he's apt. He's, he's incredible. Yeah. Just, yeah. you know, first one of the few autographs I own. Look at you. Good. How about that? All right. Last one. First concert that you went to. I think it was the kinks, man. Really old school. 70s. I like it. I'm you must have been sure. really young to be a 27 year old then. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> yeah, but I absorbed it. <laughs> <laughs> are we are we talking about the atmosphere or the music that you subdorbed? Could you? I think you get a contact absorption. <laughs> <laughs> Kinks. That's going to be hard to beat. That's, that's that hard gonna, to beat. That one's going to be sure hard. Was. That's going to be hard to beat. Well, it's been great having you on. All right, take us home, Dennis. Well, uh, for Mr. Those of you who may be clicking in Michael Nicolosi, who uh, probably one of the most fascinating people, and this is what we've talked about before on our show constantly, the variety of people that you will find in hot Springs village is, well, there's just a bunch of old people screaming for you to get off the lawn. It's that kind of, and then, and then they go play golf all day. I'm like, you don't, you have not even scratched the surface and Mr. Um, Del Fuego, what what was it, Randy? Armando Del Fucci. Yeah, Armando Del Fucci. Mr. <laughs> Armando, Mr. Del, Armando Del Fucci. Mr. Del Fucci has proven that point once again. And for Hot Springs Village Inside Out, I'm Dennis Simpson, and he is Randy Cantrell. And it's and he is Armando Del Fucci. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's a good drop. <laughs> Thanks for listening to another episode of Hot Springs Village Inside Out, a podcast where Hot Springs Village, Arkansas is the star. Please subscribe to the podcast. You can do that by visiting our website, hsvinsideout.com, and tell a friend.